I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, my Biblio Spran, Biblio Howlers, and Biblio Mansers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means so much to me. Hi everyone, Patek here. Today's video will be another episode of SFF Spotlight and today it will be SFF Spotlight episode 20. This is, uh, for those of you who are new to this series of video, this series of videos is where I will talk about new special edition, new book news, new cover reveals, and new noteworthy release in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre. And today we have about 19 topics to spotlight and I will just start immediately from special edition in today's video because we have two special editions to talk about and the first one is really really special. So Curious King has announced their edition for the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin and the artist behind this edition will be John Anthony D. Giovanni. If you're someone who are into the series and especially if you are someone who are into collecting special edition, you have to pay attention to this one. The incredible John Anthony Di Giovanni will be the illustrator on this book and each in the series and will be producing 10 full color images for this edition. According to Anthony, the director of Curious King, John's painted realism works so well in both fantasy and sci-fi and was the perfect match for the series. John will be completing two landscape images, dust jacket and end papers, as well as eight further dipped in portrait pieces. Both myself and N.K. Jemisin are thrilled with the dust jacket depicting Asun and Tonki first arriving at Kashrima Under, the town carved from a geode. I cannot wait to see the rest of the imagery from John as we progress through the year. Personally speaking, I love John Anthony Di Giovanni's artwork. I have talked about his artworks on this channel plenty of times, many times really, because he has done a lot of amazing cover art for many self-published fantasy books as well. But to make things even better, I think Anthony and Curious King has done a phenomenal job in designing the edition. I will let the pictures speak for themselves. So the special edition for the fifth season will be divided into three categories. The first one will be the standard edition. This one will be limited to 500 copies and the pre-order price will be 210 pounds. And then there is the numbered edition, which is limited to 200 copies. For this one, the pre-order price will be 565 pounds. And finally, the super limited edition, which is the lettered edition. This one will be limited to 26 copies and the pre-order price will be 2,450 pounds. And if you see the image here, you can see that there is a real amethyst embedded into the book. That is insane. Just from these pictures and the details, I will leave the link in the description down below. I think this edition, all of them will look amazing, even the standard edition. So if you're interested in getting yourself a copy of this one, make sure to mark your calendar. You can start pre-ordering this book this Sunday on the 22nd of January, 8 p.m. GMT. Make sure to mark your calendar. And if you haven't read the Broken Earth trilogy yet, I highly recommend you to give it a try. I think the fifth season and especially the third book, uh, The Stone Sky, are amazing. Whether I end up getting a copy of this or not, I must say that I am very excited because uh, just as a reminder, Curious King is currently in production for their edition for The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. And I cannot wait to get my hands on that one. If you're someone who are into special edition, remember the name Curious King. They will be big very soon in my opinion. And speaking of another publisher that in my opinion will become more famous in the future, this is to talk about Raidmark Creative again. So this next topic is just another reminder that the Kickstarter campaign for Mother of Learning Art 2, the hardcover and also paperback edition is currently live. At the time of recording this video, almost all the stretch goals have been met and so it is confirmed that Daniel Kamarudin and Asur Misoa will be back to illustrate the end papers again. I own the hardcover edition of Mother of Learning Arc 1 and their illustration on the end papers are stunning. There are less than two weeks left before the end of the campaign so there's still time for you to get this book if you want to get it. If you missed the Kickstarter campaign for Arc 1, you can get yourself a copy of Arc 1 as well on this Kickstarter campaign. Moving on to the next section of today's SFF Spotlight. Before we go back to talking about books, let's talk a bit about TV show adaptation and also about anime. So first, House of the Dragon won the Golden Globe Award for the best TV show drama 
category and I think this one is just so well deserved. In my opinion, House of the Dragon is one of the best TV show, maybe even the best TV show that I watched last year. From what I have watched so far, I actually think that the TV show is even better than the books. I cannot wait to watch season 2 and yeah, once again, this TV show is awesome and the trophy is well deserved. And moving on to the next spotlight, it has been confirmed that Stephen Colbert will be producing a TV show adaptation of Chronicles of Amber series by Roger Zelani. I haven't read Chronicles of Amber yet, but this series, I have heard from so many people that it is one of the most influential series out there, the most influential fantasy series out there, but it is also one of the most under talk. Hopefully the TV show adaptation will be great and there will be more discussion and spotlight on this series. And moving on to the next topic, the trailer for Mandalorian season 3 is out and I have watched the trailer. I cannot wait for it. Both Mandalorian and Andor are pretty much the only Star Wars show that I am watching right now. I think both of them are impressive. Andor completely surprised me. And yes, I love Mandalorian. I cannot wait to watch season 3 this year. And by the way, speaking of Mandalorian, it is crazy just how popular Pedro Pascal will be even more now. I mean, currently Pedro Pascal is playing as Joel in the Last of Us TV show adaptation. I have watched the first episode and it is amazing just amazing. I love playing The Last of Us video games so much and I truly think that the first episode did the game justice and I cannot wait to watch episode 2 in a few days. And on top of that, probably after The Last of Us uh, season 1 finished airing, we will be watching Pedro Pascal playing again as Mandalorian. So yeah, the name Pedro Pascal will be mentioned often in the first half of 2023. And the last topic before we go back to talking about books, this is about Attack on Titan. So the teaser for the Attack on Titan final season part 3 is out but it has also been revealed that the final season part 3 will be divided into two parts so yeah it is absolutely ridiculous do they even know the word final I love Attack on Titan I love Shingeki no Kyojin and I get that they want to do the manga justice. Most likely they are taking their time with animating the show. But to divide the final season part 3 into another two parts is just crazy. Why didn't they just name the previous season as season 4 and this one as the final season? It is as simple as that. This is like what happens when you have a project and you name the project final and then you name it again seriously final and then really really final so yeah it is something like that but you know what besides the crazy naming of the finals final final season i am super excited about watching this the teaser looks absolutely incredible moving on to the next section it's time to talk about books again and the first one let's talk about sun eater by christopher Rocchio. so it is now confirmed that the sun eater will be a seven book series just like red Rising Saga in order to deliver the series the end game and ending that it deserves. But the final two books in the series will be published by Bane Books. So unlike the first five books of the series, all of them published by Door Books, yeah, the last two books will be published by another publisher, Ben Books. My brain immediately thought, so there will be a cover change and a cover design changes. But thankfully, Christopher and also Ben Books have confirmed that nothing will change to the cover artist and the cover design. They are aiming to only change the logo on the spine, but the cover artist and the design will hopefully remain the same as the previous five books. And of course, book six and seven will also be published in hardcover format and I can definitely deal with that. The working title for Sun Eater Book 6 will be This Quiet Gods and the release date is currently planned to be released in Spring 2024 while Book 7, the final book in the series, will be published hopefully at the end of 2024. So that goes away my plan to actually start and finish the Sun Eater series in 2023. But I will still start reading the Sun Eater within this year. And moving on to the next news, we have something big here. We have a title for the next installment in The Gentleman Bastards by Scott Lynch. The title of the novella will be More Than Fools Feel Griefs. And this is what Scott Lynch has to say regarding this announcement. What I want to give you now is a glimpse of the first of the several forthcoming Gentleman Bastard novellas I owe Subterranean Press. These three bite-sized Loch Lamora and Jen Tannen adventures each should be around 15 until 25% as long as a full-size Bastard novel 
collectively form a bridge narrative, describing how the lads cross a continent and characteristically find trouble at every step, starting a few minutes after the end of the Republic of Thieves and continuing to the very edge of the town of Emberlin. They are absolutely not essential for readers of the main sequence books. I am working firmly to the rule that torn readers who are completely unaware of the existence of the novella should not get a sense that anything is missing. I have every hope, however, that they will enrich the experience of every constant reader and sweeten the long gap between the third and fourth books of the main sequence. So for all of you who are watching this video right now, you are now aware of The Gentleman Bastards novellas. I personally cannot wait for it. I think The Gentleman Bastards is one of the best ongoing series right now despite how long it took for the fourth book to come out. I think it is still one of the best ongoing series right now and it is great. It is great to hear more news and confirmation on this series. I can I cannot wait to read the novellas and then eventually read The Town of Emberley. Moving on to the next topic, Thor.com has announced that they will reissue six, six classic fantasy novels by Martha Wells, starting with City of Boons. I haven't read anything by Martha Wells except uh, the first book in the Murder Bot series and I'm curious to find out whether I will love her fantasy series or not. I think on top of City of Bones, I think we will get the Rakshura series by Martha Wells as well. But yeah, there is no confirmation on this yet. I look forward to finding out which Martha Wells book that Thor.com will reissue. But for the reissue edition of the City of Bones, it will be published in early fall 2023, so within this year. And speaking of Thor.com publishing, the next topic is about Untethered Sky by Thor. Fondali. This is a standalone novella by Fondali, not happening in the Greenbone Saga series, that is published by Thor.com and now currently there is a pre-order bonus for this book. If you have pre-ordered a copy of The Untethered Sky, make sure to check out the link I leave in the description. Fondali has mentioned that readers who have pre-ordered a copy of Untethered Sky will receive a signed book plate and also a sticker. But as far as I know, this pre-order campaign will be exclusive to US and also Canada citizens. And while I'm talking about pre-order, the next topic is about the pre-order for Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brendan Sanderson is possible now. So if you're someone who missed the Kickstarter campaign for the secret novels, for the four secret novels or secret projects by Brendan Sanderson, you now have the option to pre-order the premium edition of Tress of the Emerald Sea. This can be done through Dragonsteel Books website and yes, this is the premium edition, the same edition as the one in the Kickstarter campaign. But the price for each book will be more expensive than getting them through the Kickstarter campaign, understandably. But there is also extra bonus that comes in the bundle. I highly recommend you to check out Dragonsteel website for this. I have read Tress of the Emerald Sea and I think it is such a great book. I didn't know that Sanderson is capable of writing such a whimsical and fun story, but as it turns out, he succeeded at it wonderfully. I think many people love Tress of the Emerald Sea and I'm happy that this book will be accessible to many readers that didn't get a chance or the opportunity to pledge the Kickstarter campaign. We only have two sections left in today's SFS Spotlight and those are cover reveals and also new noteworthy release. Let's talk about cover reveals first. We have plenty of cover reveals, new cover reveals to talk about today. And the first one is for Translation State by Anne Leckie. This one is done by Lauren Panepinto and this book will be taking place in the same world as the Imperial Rock series, which starts with Unkillery Justice. I haven't read anything by Anne Leckie yet, but the Imperial Rock uh, trilogy won so many awards, so many. I really have to try reading that series someday. And the next cover reveal is for another book published by Orbit Books. This is The Blighted Stars by Megan O'Keefe. The first book in the Devoured World series, uh, I think a trilogy, and this one will be coming in May 2023. The cover art is done by Jamie Jones. Jamie Jones is one of my favorite artists, I think. He has done so many terrific cover art, and I'm glad to see he still retain his greatness in this cover art as well. I've read Velocity Weapon by Megan O'Keefe. I think that was a great book and I really need to continue with that series. But yeah, I'm looking forward to reading Blighted Stars as well. Moving on to the next cover reveal, this one is for The Sword Catcher by Cassandra Clare. I think many of you know who Cassandra Clare is already. And yeah, this one will be her first, I think her first adult fantasy novel. Cassandra Clare is an incredibly famous YA fantasy author and I'm curious to see 
how she will do in her adult fantasy book. The cover art looks good, but honestly, it's not my favorite. So that's for traditionally published books cover art. Now let's talk about self-published fantasy books new cover reveal. And all three, all of them looks amazing. I will show you the first one. This is for the first book in the Trial of the Berserker series, Primal Fury by Noel Trevor. This is a debut novel and look at this cover art. It looks amazing. It looks very, very nice. Yes, pun totally intended. And this will be a grimdark fantasy debut novel and the cover art is done by a Korean artist named Texo and the design is done by Miblart. I don't know much about this one. As I said, this is a debut novel, but with this cover art, it certainly got my attention. I will try to read this one when the book is out. And moving on to the next one, we have the cover reveal for Legacy of Brick and Bone, the second book in the Tainted Dominion series by Crystal Matar. I think some of you might know about the first book in the Tainted Dominion series, Legacy of the Bright Wash, which despite all the great things I've heard, I still haven't read, but I will try to finally read Legacy of the Bright Wash early next month. That's my plan anyway. And this book, the second book in the series, supposedly will be released this April. Both the cover art and cover design are both done by Brad Berkman, the cover artist behind the first one as well. And I think it looks great. I really love the typography being used for both cover art, the cover art of the first book and the second book. And I cannot wait to find out why so many people, those who have read the first book, really love the book. And the final cover reveal to talk about today will be for Mystic Reborn by Jeff Spade. This is the second book in the archives of Evelium, which is the sequel to Paladin Unbound. I haven't started reading this series yet, but I think if I remember correctly, I think Philip Chase has reviewed Paladin Unbound and I think he enjoyed that one. Hopefully the second book, Mystic Reborn, will be even better. But if we're talking strictly about cover art, I can certainly say, in my opinion, the cover art topped over the first book by far. Look at this insanely gorgeous cover art. The cover artist is still the same as the first one, Omer Burak Onal. And well, because we're talking about cover art, I think this is a huge improvement over the first book. The release date for Mystic Reborn will be 1st of April, and currently, the first book is on a huge discount on Amazon. Make sure to check it out if you're interested in giving this series a try. And now we have arrived at the final section of today's SFF Spotlight video, and it's time to talk about new, noteworthy release. I only have two Two books to talk about today and the first one is of war and ruin by ryan cahill the third book in the bound and the broken series is out now this one is a chonker and i am reading through this book right now i think i'm about 15 percent or 20 percent you might think that's small but this book the kindle pages count is 1400 pages so 20 percent is almost 300 pages long if we're judging by that measurement but that this book is massive it is 430,000 words long bigger than the first two books in the stormlight archive series but slightly shorter than the third and fourth book in the stormlight archive for comparison yeah it is an epic fantasy and currently i am enjoying through this book and yeah and if you're a fan of the bound and the broken series the third book is out now and you can get yourself a copy of it and finally the last noteworthy release and the last topic of today's video will be about a shade of madness by tiago abdallah this is the second book in the ashes of avarin series and this book will be out next tuesday on the 24th of january 2023 i think the cover art of a shade of madness looks really good look at that griffin but on top of that if you get yourself a hardcover copy of a shade of madness you will get this beautiful beautiful artwork printed on the front page of the book and this art is done by sparrow spring art i think it looks super stunning i cannot wait to find out why this griffin is so pissed so that's the end of today's sff spotlight video do let me know your thoughts on these topics that i just talked about and as always thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support bye bye lastly i want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me